Redux Toolkit, a state management library that allows you to manage the state of your JavaScript applications more efficiently and predictably. It's like Redux 2.0. Redux got tired of people complaining about its boring, repetitive chores, aka boilerplate codes, and decided to level up to become simpler, faster, and cooler. To understand how useful Redux Toolkit is, let's give a quick explanation of how it works. Imagine your app is a restaurant and we have customers, which act as components that give orders, aka your states. Now, these orders need to be processed and managed efficiently. In a typical restaurant, the kitchen, cashier, and customers might need to constantly communicate directly with each other, causing confusion and inefficiency. But what if we simplify this process? With Redux Toolkit, we set up a centralized order board where all orders are stored in one place. When a customer places an order, the waiter sends it to the order board. This setup helps everyone, kitchen, cashier, and customers, keep track of the orders without talking directly to each other. Instead, they all read updates from the central order board whenever something changes. The best part? Redux Toolkit makes it super simple to set up the store, create actions, and manage the state without all the hassle of writing tons of boilerplate code. To put in action, let's create a to-do app which create read and delete to-do item using Redux Toolkit. First, let's install Redux Toolkit in our project. Go in your terminal and type npm install, and then at redux.js slash toolkit, and then react-redux. This will install the dependencies in your package file and enable us to use Redux Toolkit in our project. To start using Redux Toolkit in our project, we need to wrap our app with it. Let's go to the index.js, or main file, which is a starting point of our React app, and wrap the app with the Redux provider component. It will be imported from the React Redux library, enabling all our React components to access the Redux store, to connect our store, we pass it as a prop to the provider component. After setting up the provider component, we need to create a store for it. In simple terms, all the store does is hold the app's state and the logic for updating that state. It's similar to the central order board we mentioned earlier. The purpose of the store is to allow components to access this state without passing it manually through props. To create our store, let's first make a file called store.js. Inside, let's first define a constant named store and then import a function called configure store. This function from the Redux Toolkit will set up your Redux store. After that, we define a reducer to manage all our reducers. Then, let's add a reducer here called to-do reducer and export the store, which will be used in the provider we created earlier. Now, you might be wondering, what is a reducer? Simply speaking, a reducer tells Redux how to update the state. Just like the store holds all the states, a reducer is how we tell Redux how to update that state in the store. To understand this better, let's see how to-do reducer works. Let's first create a file called todo slice.js. And inside that file, let's define a constant called todo slice and then import a function called create slice from Redux Toolkit. Now, you might be thinking, what is this slice we are talking about? No, it's not a pizza slice. In very simple terms, a slice in Redux Toolkit is a way to group together the state, reducers, and actions for a specific feature of your app. This solves the boilerplate code we usually encounter in vanilla Redux, where you need to define each reducer and action in separate files, resulting in a lot of repetitive code, especially as the app grows. So first, let's create a name for the slice, which in our case is called to-dos. After that, let's define the initial state for our to-do app, which will be an empty array. The initial state in Redux Toolkit refers to the starting state of your application, or a specific slice of your application, before any actions are dispatched to update it. And here's the fun part. After defining your initial state, you can now define your reducers. Earlier, we said that reducers define how to update the state stored in our store. For example, if we want to add a to-do item, let's create a reducer case and name it add to do. The add to do case reducer can take two arguments, state and action. In Redux, the state refers to the data or information that the store holds. The state variable represents the current state of the to-do list when this action is triggered. Initially, we set the state to be an empty array. After that is the action. The action is an object that contains information about what needs to be done with the state. It has a type which identifies the action, and optionally, a payload which contains the data necessary for updating the state. In this case, the action object is passed into the reducer function, and the important part in here is the payload. The payload contains the text of the new to-do item that you want to add. We will understand how it works at a later time. Then, let's also create another reducer case named delete to-do which will filter the state based on the ID passed in the payload. And of course, to access our slice and reducers that we created, let's export them. After we are done setting up the provider, store, and the reducers, let's then go into the app file to use them. Inside the app, we have an H1 for the title, an input field, a button for adding the to-do, and finally, a use state hook for managing the text of the to-do. To access our store, we need to use the use selector hook from React Redux, 
to retrieve a specific piece of state from the Redux store. In our case, we access the to-do state, which comes from our store, and this to-do state is managed by the slice we created. If we log this constant to the console, it will return an empty array because the initial state we defined is an empty array. After that, let's create a function to handle adding a to-do. This function will include an if statement that checks if there is a value in the text we provided in the input. If there is, it will dispatch the action. The dispatch keyword we see here comes from a constant we define using use dispatch from React Redux. This allows us to use the reducers we defined in our slices, such as the add to do or delete to do reducer cases. And that's basically how Redux Toolkit works. First, we wrap the app with a provider to allow components to access the state. Then, we create a store to define the reducers we will use. After that, we create those reducers using a slice, which includes the name, initial state, and the reducers that define how to handle and process the action payloads. Finally, we use the use selector hook to retrieve the state we need and the use dispatch hook to access the reducer cases defined in our to-do slice. Of course, you can create more slices and reducers if needed. For example, if we want to manage the state for a dark mode theme, we can create a new slice and name it something like theme for the initial state, we can set it to light as the default theme. In the reducers, we include a function to toggle between light and dark modes. Next, we update our Redux store to include the new theme slice alongside the existing to-do slice. Finally, we incorporate it into our app's JSX, where it will be used within the app, and dispatch the current theme state. The possibilities are endless. Redux Toolkit is immensely helpful for managing a large number of states. What we demonstrated earlier involves just a few states. You can harness the power of Redux Toolkit even more, for example, in e-commerce applications, where you need to manage the cart state, such as adding, removing, or updating items in the cart. Additionally, there's the user state, which includes authentication, user profiles, or order history, and the product state, which stores product details, filter options, and search criteria, among other functionalities. Redux Toolkit simplifies writing actions and reducers, speeding up development. It also excels in scalability and code maintainability, making it a valuable tool for complex applications. And I know we've discussed a lot of concepts today, which is why we've made a PDF version of this video. It's free, but we would really appreciate any support you give to the channel. This is just the basics of Redux Toolkit. We will still discuss how Redux Toolkit works with data fetching and such using RTK Query, and how middleware works here, so subscribe to stay tuned for that. Well, that's it for now, Novas. Thank you for watching.